No joke, these be yourself quotes came from a blog, success.com, a site created to inspire and details various ways to reach that thing called success. Apparently, greats from all decades and generations have addressed the pertinence of being brave and of being authentic, suggesting it's important and dare I say imperative to be different. Go figure. <laughs> Ralph Waldo Emerson, to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. Oscar Wilde, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Rita Mae Brown, I think the reward for conformity is that everyone likes you except yourself. Bertrand Russell, do not fear to be eccentric in opinion, for every opinion now accepted was once eccentric. Steve Jobs, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Powerful, inspiring words, wouldn't you say? But who, who are they talking to? Is it just for a select few? Perhaps those in certain fields will achieve success when these ideologies are implemented. Under what circumstances can one truly be themselves? Because Dave Chappelle says, every black American is bilingual, all of them. We speak street vernacular and we speak job interview, affirming this idea of two-ness. In the souls of black folk, W.E.B. Du Bois, the great African-American thinker, author, editor, wrote, one ever feels his two-ness, an American and a Negro. Two souls, two thoughts, two unreconciled strivings, two warring ideals in one dark body. With that, can success truly be achieved by being brave enough to be ever authentic? Can success truly be achieved by being brave enough to be ever authentic? I mean, am I able as a black individual, as a black woman familiar with this ideal of Tunis, am I able to soar? Am I able to achieve and shine by showing up as is? Hello, hey, greetings, peace, what's up, what's good, grand day. <laughs> to the 3% audience and leadership, thank you for having me and being present. Thank you for the platform. Cheers to 10, specifically cheers to a decade of difference. That's really, really dope, congratulations. My name is Davida Galloway, and while I have many titles, <laughs> Co-owner, co-founder, executive director, doer, host, costumer, auntie, best friend, etc. The one that's super fly and bestowed upon me by a close friend may be my favorite. Authenticity evangelist. Fly, right? It's dope. <laughs> so listen, I haven't always been brave enough to show up with teal hair, dripping in tattoos, particularly in professional settings and arenas. It's certainly been a journey of becoming, of butterflying, of unpacking and shedding stuff and layers. But honey, I'm home. Speaking of home, ever since I was little, I witnessed a difference. This difference typically occurred when I, my friends, my family, Members of my community found ourselves amongst others of a different ethnic background, primarily white Americans, be it in school, around the neighborhood, in the grocery store, in a department store, at my parents' place of employment, you name it. As a child, I saw and took part in this thing called code switching. And as I grew older, I began to understand why it exists. Originally developed in linguistics, code switching referred to individuals who switched between two or more languages, right? Speaking to a bilingual nature. Today though, we use it more broadly to describe the myriad of ways we adapt and assimilate to the dominant culture, be it our language, speech, dress, mannerisms, and actions. 
It's the act of changing how we act at home in our environments naturally to present as more appealing or acceptable to those with perceived and or real power, AKA those who belong to the dominant culture. As a child, I code switched to not stand out and be picked on. As a teen, I code switched to appear as cool in a variety of circles. As a young adult, I code switched to appear as proficient and capable. Now, as a full grown woman, I stand out on purpose. <laughs> Go figure. So people code switch, right, for a variety of reasons. And sometimes it's not to fit into white culture, but to survive it. People code switch to appear less threatening. They implement this thing called white voice, shift posture, dress differently, and can mimic traditional gender characteristics to avoid altercations altogether. People code switch and modify their behaviors because sometimes, because sometimes, it feels like a requirement to be recognized for efforts and talents or to even be promoted. And in the work setting, where a dominant culture is oftentimes present, just to ground it a little, code switching may look like the following. It can look like women sharing lewd jokes to be a part of this boys club. Perhaps it looks like me straightening my hair, or better yet, throwing on a wig to look more corporate and adhere to white-centered standards. It looks like non-binary individuals wearing traditional gendered clothing, just as a few examples. And why there are many reasons why people code switch, particularly in the workplace. There are just as many costs to doing so that threaten productivity and hurts the bottom line as I recently shared in a Fast Company op-ed. Code switching threatens true diversity. And not only of physical presence, but of thought, of experiences, of mindset, of strengths, and creates an echo chamber of sorts. To be consistent as a brand is one thing, right? Take the quality of product created. You definitely want consistency there. But what's the benefit of being part of an office culture where people dress, speak, and look the same? In my experience, a lack of diversity directly leads to a lack of innovation. The diverse experiences of people of color can not only enrich ideas, they inform new perspectives and approaches to projects and processes, but code switching often prevents them from being shared. These individuals oftentimes have an unwillingness to push back on ideas, disagree with the dominant, partake in constructive criticism and healthy debate because of the need to be acceptable. Marginalized groups expected to accommodate the comfort and ease of those in power spend a lot more time learning how to be acceptable instead of actually being productive at work. When you're forced to place yourself in a neat, clean, digestible box Opportunities for growth are stripped away. For people of color, this can lead to a slower ascent up the ladder and an overwhelming sense of frustration. More, the daily stress and anxiety associated with putting forth effort to adapt to the dominant culture has tremendous impacts. Think about it, when you're constantly second guessing yourself from the second you wake up about what to wear, how to style your hair, or even how to speak, your resources deplete quickly. That is only compounded as people, people of color are working under extreme pressure to perform at a higher level because of stereotypes that paint them as lazy and less than. Insert me here. For me, that hits home as I know a little, okay, perhaps a lot, about wanting to appear safe and come across as acceptable at work. And you know what it costs me? It cost me my happiness. For years, I felt like I couldn't show up as my colorful self. I couldn't show up as my true self and contribute. As such, I entered the premises as a shell of myself, yet was expected to fully participate. Tell you right now, that only resulted in endless nights of tear-soaked pillows 
and the questioning of my value, the questioning of my worth. I mean, did the color of my hair, pitch of my voice, my mannerisms, display of my tattoos negatively impact my performance? Does me showing up in all of my glory limit productivity? The answer is no. Actually, the answer is a resounding no. If anything, productivity and performance was turned up as I was finally able to bring my full self and all of my experiences to each and every challenge and to each and every opportunity. I decided, realized, and leaned into the reality that I wasn't what they thought. I was more than. I turned Jim Morrison's question inward. Where's your will to be weird? I listened to Beyonce affirm, your self-worth is definitely determined by you. You don't have to depend on someone telling you who you are. I understood Lao Tzu, care about what other people think, and you will always be their prisoner. Johnny Depp's deep thought hit home. I think everybody's weird. We should all celebrate our individuality and not be embarrassed or ashamed by it. I questioned my value. I questioned my worth until Brene Brown's message settled. Owning our stories and loving ourselves through that process is the bravest thing we'll ever do. And it was actually through that process I realized that I too am a beacon. I too am a great. And so I quote, I am more than meets the eye. And what I look like has nothing to do with what I'm capable of, yet informs everything. I will no longer mute or turn myself down for the comfort of others in any room, at any table, regardless of the space. As a matter of fact, I have much to contribute. As a matter of fact, I have others looking at me. As a matter of fact, one girl said, Seeing you lets me know that I can too. That I can too dare to be different. <laughs> wow. Powerful. Inspiring words. Wouldn't you say?